Welcome. Remember when I did that uh, V8 supercar based on a Volvo? I mean, Volvo and called it a Volvo? Yeah. Well, somebody was doing some uh, stuff in a category called DTM, which is apparently basically a GT3 car. And I thought, you know what? I didn't really do enough with my Volvo. So I brought it back. And we are now going to be using this in BMG as a GT3 car doing our Friday Park Day. And we're gonna compare times. So I did actually go through and do a little bit of extra editing in Blender after this. Like I cleaned up these uh, colors here and added a few extra little bits of colors. I changed the number up from the funny number, hey, hey, Bazinga, to my actual like uh, racing number now, which is a thing which I'm going to always be going with, which is the 86. So thank you to Omar for actually uh, showing me properly how to size the engine. So here we got the proper size 4.99 liter engine. And it's a fairly decent engine too. I'll just quickly run you through the things, the things here. We got like a dual overhead cam, four valves for cylinder, aluminium, all that kind of jazz. Got a lower cam profile, but with a high quality head. So then we could uh, have the right power to weight ratio, which I'll show you the build rules in a second. But yeah, we're able to get 527.6 kilowatts out of this. Oh, sorry, horsepower. I mean, everything's fairly standard here. No turbo charges for my GT3 car. We gone with a multi-point EFI, not a uh, EFI, not uh, direct injection which is probably because this engine is just a little bit older, so I thought I would go with that. Then a race tubular, and let's give this thing a bit of a listen. Oh, that idle. That is a pretty good idle. Oh my god, did you hear that pop? That's a good sounding engine. Anyway, let's move on. So we didn't really change a whole lot. We've added extra large uh, evacuation area for air to come around for there. We've added on this little bit of a hood scoop here. We've moved the numbers around. So this is to add aerodynamic flow all the way through there. We changed the color of the roof to be like a carbon fiber weave. And then in uh, beam energy, you're gonna see that I put in a color all the way along here nice. And then there's a bit of a side stripe. Oh, it was a... Uh, Pretty happy with that turned out. We made the front lip here a little bit better. And that's pretty much it for styling. We made this a little bit bigger, a little bit lower, and uh, moved it out a little bit as well. Then on the drivetrain, we basically just kept our, kept our speed a little bit by about 10 kilometers an hour. So then we could drop our price down. Our material costs come down when they're your top speed is below 300 kilometers an hour. Went with an electronic LSD. We went with some pretty fat tires. Now, these are meant to be 325s on front and 325s on rear, but apparently you could trade off more for the rear as opposed to the front or vice versa, whichever it is that you prefer to do. But I think I accidentally made my front tires a little bit too small, but we've already done the race now, so uh, I know what it's actually like. Our brakes are fairly decent. They did the job. It's a little bit tricky to look at here, but you get the idea. Then with the downforce, we upped the quality of it quite a bit, had a bit of brake cooling, though apparently we could have done with just a tad bit more. The cooling airflow was fairly decent. Rear wing angle and front angle were dropped quite a bit. So with the aerodynamics here, I didn't want to have the normal wing that I have here in the hood. I actually wanted to have a uh, different style of thing. And I went with a sort of vent I want, and then I put in an invisible wing here. Boop, there it is, as you can see. And that worked out pretty well. Uh, what I ended up doing though, is realizing that I didn't have enough downforce on the front, or I could have had fatter tires on the front, because I did have a little bit of extra leeway with the tires I decided to not use, and that was a mistake. But I think that it turned out fairly decently. I compensated for the lack of front traction when it understeers with uh, enough front downforce. Your interior, is, oh, bleh, your interior is fairly standard. You got one seat and it's sport, that's it. Drive Z, we got ourselves some ABS, and then a little bit of safety there to make sure our weight is not too small and to match the uh, power number that we're going with. Got a fairly normal kind of setup for suspension here. And then on the test track, it does a fairly decent job. Anytime today now, please. There we go. A 155, not bad. I might do more with GT3 in the, in, in the future. But for now, let me show you why this body is not particularly great for GT3. So if I turn the body invisible, all right, oh, hold on, and fixtures. You can see here that the engine is like just ever so slightly in front of the front tires. So it's not particularly great. Anyway, let's go over and see uh, what we've done in BeamNG. So here's our car. As you can see, we've done a little bit of extra work. I put in this red stripe and then realized a little bit later on that maybe it looks a little too much like an Audi, but I don't care. I really do like it. And I've done a few other little extra things as well. As you can see here, I hit out this usually floats off of the tire 
but I kept on having problems with it clipping through the tire when I got it closer to the tire. So I just ended up making the lettering 3D in Blender as well. And you can also kind of see here that I actually changed the material of the tire to actually be slick not semi-slick. And then coming around to the rear, you can see here that we've also got these extra vents in here, which is uh, something I added in automation as well. And then this racing stripe down the side, and as you can see, we've got the 86. And yeah, I was fairly happy with uh, the little minor changes I made. Also, you can see here that I made this vent here compared to the old previous one much bigger. In fact, let me show you. So one of the big things about GT3 versus the old school uh, V8 supercars is its focus on aero. So you can see here that we do have a little bit of a better front splitter here, though it does seem to be jiggling for some reason. This is much bigger here, and you can see that this one has a big vent open area, where here it's only got a small one. And that's because there's not really a lot of body modification that's allowed. I also do think I picked up my game with the decal kind of uh, livery style compared to this one, which had a, just a simple one thing on the side here. I also did like the uh, wheel color, uh, a different change as well. But yeah, this is uh, much better. I do like this quite a bit, what we've gone through and made here. Well, yeah. Now now it's time to go see the lap. <laughs> 69. <laughs> and here finally is the lap. And I recorded this lap a while ago. And I must say, this car is absolutely just a dream to handle. Sure, you have to go a little bit slower than what you'd like to, but compared to the V8 supercar version, this one is so much cleaner at driving around corners. Getting out of corners is still a little bit tricky. You do have to really feather that throttle on. And with that engine weight being so far forward, it does like to understeer quite a lot, like oddly at like a middle speed. At low speed, it handles quite nicely because you've got the really big front tires. Then in the middle speed, it starts to lose its shit. And then at higher speeds, it's got the downforce again, so it starts to handle again. And I added so much downforce to the front of this thing to get less understeer. And I decided to get to the point where, like, I was just creating more drag than downforce. It was just crazy. But I did use my wing mod. So when you go to use this vehicle, I do actually have uh, custom setups on this right now. Remember to set the front wing to... 0 0.3 uh, on the positive side and then the rear wing you needed a little less downforce so it's set to uh, minus 0 0.05 just that little bit less on the rear to help it become a little bit more tail happy but coming up here like I can tell that this thing is faster than the V8 supercar and what we need to do is be able to beat a 10 minute lap going up here so we, it, you get to see what the time is at the end of this lap and yeah, I'm happy with how this car turned out. In general, this car was pretty good. Also, one thing that uh, the keen-eyed viewer amongst you may notice is that my front numbers don't glow. And that was one of the things I changed as well. That was fairly stupid of me. But that's, uh, that's just a little bit of a side note. That was an idiot mistake I made. You can see there it gets a little bit squeamish as we break super hard into there under a weight transition of turning left and then getting ready to turn right into that uh, hairpin corner there. In mid corners like that one, you can see that I had to slow down more than what you'd expect. And here you're gonna see that I'm going quite slow again. It's these mid corners that kill this car. I think maybe if I had have actually used a little bit of a thicker front tire, that this would have actually been probably 30 seconds faster than what it was. Now, don't get me wrong, this car is already fast, but it could have been a whole lot faster. The big issue with this one, though, is its power oversteer. And much like the V8 supercar, it really does struggle with that weight being really, really far forward. But every time I've played a online racing simulator, I've always wanted to play GT3. So I have a lot of experience with GT3 cars in sims and it doesn't actually feel a whole lot different i understand now why a lot of those cars suffer from power oversteer at low speeds this car suffers from that as well but it is also remember pushing uphill on a flat surface i did a little bit of testing in this car and it's pretty decent you can see there that we're struggling with that mid corner speed i did get it offline but then it's able to control but you really do have to 
ease it onto the pow when you're going around this card. You can see here it stays nice and tight on this particular corner. That one is one that I struggle with on pretty much with every car. It'll tend to want to go wide and I'll end up killing myself by going off the edge. It still held it in pretty good, but then it just digs in when you want it to actually turn in. So you've, you've got a, it's, I don't know, man. You have to try out this car. It's great, but also somehow like bad with understeer at certain, I don't understand it fully. I'm just, I'm going to come out and say it. I don't understand its weird tendency to understeer at the most unusual times. Anyway, now I would like to thank the person that uh, gave me these generalized rules, and that would be the Cry Sick Ben, who's uh, been around the channel for quite a while, uh, giving me a few good cars to test out and whatnot. But he really also pointed out how wishy-washy the rules are and how they are very much specifically for each individual car. So allow me to go through a few of them. So it's based on a production car. No chassis modifications are allowed. There has to be a certain number of them produced. And then there's the silhouette rule where basically it has to keep its silhouette. But a lot of car companies release a GT3 version of their car so just so then they can get around the fact that they don't want to make every car a hardcore racer. And they're not going to be able to sell many of those. Most people don't like it when they're like that brutal of a car. So I would like to think that Volvo, the car company that preceded Volvo, <laughs> uh, was making these sorts of special GT cars, much like they used to back in the old day for the British Touring Car Championship. Then there's also a weight limitation. It's 1,200 to 1,300 kilos, approximately. Apparently, though, there is a lot of wiggle room with that. And then there's a power limit, which isn't going to make a whole lot of sense when we get a little bit further down. But it has a limitation of 500 to 600 horsepower. So you've got a weight limitation and a power limitation. But then on top of that, You've also got a power to weight ratio limitation, which I didn't quite understand, but I mean, sure, why not? You've got a, and also, I don't understand why they've written it this way as well. They've got horsepower to kilograms, which is a imperial to metric. And then he's also written it in longhand the other way for kilowatts to pounds, which is metric to imperial. But we'll just go with horsepower to kilowatts. Uh, to, to, to kilograms and it's between 0 0.04 horsepower per kilogram to 0 0.43 horsepower per kilogram and obviously I went to the maximum I got this thing as close to 0 0.43 as possible without actually going over then we went with a sequential gearbox rear wheel drive that uh, they all choose I don't know why they've limited to not have a dual clutch transmission but Ah, uh, sure, that was a the thing they did. Sequentials are expensive, man. I wouldn't recommend that uh, a sequential for racing is any cheaper than a dual clutch transmission, especially since a lot of these car companies go with a dual clutch transmission. Anyway, I don't get it, but that's a limitation they have. Maximum wheel diameter of 18 millimeters, max tire size of 325 front and rears, but then apparently you can trade them off. Uh, take a little bit from here, add a little bit there type thing. And that's what we did. We took off 15 from the front and added 10 on the rear. Though I kind of wish I'd only taken 10 off the front and added 10 to the rear. That probably would have actually made this ahead a little lot better. But you can try it yourself. You can enjoy it as much as I do. Now, I also want to point out that this was probably my second run that made it this far. No, it was my second run making it this far. And I'm handling it really well. This car is, though it does understeer, quite predictable. Also, I'd like to add that... Yes, I actually do think that my driving skills are getting considerably better. As you guys can see that I am rarely crashing these days. Though, in the big collab where we did Grip C cars, I did crash. But that was only twice. So the rest of that race, I did absolutely fine. And if you remember my early videos, oh boy, I crashed a lot. But now it's considerably rarer for me to actually crash. So yeah, the final one is that uh, the downforce is determined independent for each car. I don't entirely understand why they would have that. I don't know why, uh, why they don't just say that at this speed, it gets this amount of downforce maximum. Uh, and it has to be a natural ramp. It can't have like variable wings or that sort of stuff. Though 
hmm, these day and ages with fail safes and all that sort of stuff, I don't understand why they wouldn't allow a variable wing. I do get that uh, you would hate to have somebody going into a high speed corner trying to break really super late and then realize that the aerofoil at the back isn't creating an air damp for extra braking. That, yes, <laughs> would suck. But allow me to bring you back to the end of the race here. So we are actually getting quite close. We've got a few more corners. In a moment, we'll be coming up to the penultimate hairpin corner. And you get this nice sweeping shot. I'm just showing how big this landscape is. But uh, now we're coming up to the penultimate uh, hairpin corner here. We've only got a few more swervies, which... This is actually where I crashed the first time round. I'd made it all the way this far. On my first attempt, I got to here, I went wide, so you can see that I'm going extra slow and hugging the inside, and that's where I went off. So I didn't want to repeat that again. That was such a waste of 10 minutes. But as you can see that timer, we are coming in well under the 10 minutes that the V8 supercar did. The, this car is just so much better. And I want to kind of do a little bit more race series kind of stuff with this. So at the end of this relatively easy video to make, because the car was surprisingly easy to make, and the lap was surprisingly easy to do, I would like to thank everyone that helped out, and uh, all the people like you that watched the video. Also, if you haven't yet seen it, I did a really fun collaboration with Shiny Odd, Consider, Twin Turbos, a little bit of tries, as in he tries to be there, but he had computer issues. Uh, I'm gonna take the next week off. I need a bit of a break for my health and also my mental health. And when I come back, I hope to do more streams and stuff like that. Uh, I want to do more live races with the help with, of uh, Preston who set up the custom server. But for now, I'd like to say, please subscribe if you aren't subscribed. And if you liked the video, please hit that like button, put a comment down below. And for now, I'll catch you next time. Mm, goodbye.